As a biopharmaceutical company, we are highly regulated by federal, state, and local agencies to ensure the safety and quality of our products and safety of our customers and employees. As a contractor, it is important you are aware there are hazards to consider prior to initiating your work on site and specific safety requirements to abide by in your work. You must complete a pre-task plan with the facility's operation representative before starting any work. This plan will identify hazards of the proposed work task and will establish safety controls that must be used. All contractors and employees on site have responsibilities in meeting these requirements. We take meeting these requirements seriously and expect all contractors working on site to have the same commitment. If while working on site you have any questions regarding your work here, ask your project manager. You must acquire an identification badge and work area access through front desk security personnel. Your project manager should set this up prior to your arrival on site and will determine if you need a daily pass for infrequent work or a semi-permanent badge for longer term work. All daily passes must be returned to security at the end of the day. If you are a longer term contractor, you will be issued an ID badge key card with your photograph that must be returned at the end of the project. Badges must be worn at all times in clear sight. Immediately report to security if your badge is lost or stolen. At the beginning of the project, check with your project manager regarding the use of break rooms, telephones, and restrooms. A few security issues to remember and follow are, do not prop open doors, do not open doors for anyone, obey all traffic laws and parking signs, Report any unusual activities to security. The use, possession, sale, distribution, or being under the influence of alcohol, illegal drugs, or other controlled substances on the property is strictly forbidden. The following are prohibited. Firearms and ammunition, the use of all tobacco products, and photography is not permitted. Finally, all information that is not public knowledge is confidential and must be kept confidential. It is your obligation to preserve this confidentiality. At the beginning of your project, work with your project manager to develop an evacuation procedure. This procedure must include a designated assembly area, system of accounting for employees, and a method to communicate with emergency personnel. All persons working at the site must be trained in this evacuation procedure. If a fire alarm sounds, all employees, including contract workers, must immediately evacuate the building and go to their designated assembly area and report any missing personnel. You are not permitted to re-enter any building until you are told to do so by site security or emergency responders. When you enter an area to work, make sure you know your location, the building and room number, the location of emergency equipment, and the closest evacuation route. If there is a non-life-threatening emergency, immediately dial 2279 on any in-house phone or 707-453-2279 on cellular phones. This will put you in contact with the site's in-house security team. Incidents warranting a call would be injuries, property damage, fires, chemical spills or exposure, or anything else that could cause harm to persons or property. There may also be an on-site occupational health nurse available for first aid. Dial 9911 for any life-threatening emergencies. Following this call, contact security at 2279 to alert them of the situation. An injury illness incident form must be filled out within 24 hours, including details of the incident, and sent to your HSC representative. Everyone on site must follow the Federal Government Food and Drug Administration regulatory requirements, called Good Manufacturing Practices, or GMPs. At this location, we have strict guidelines regarding management of wardrobe for regulated production areas, facilities maintenance systems, dust, dirt, or odor, food and or drink in work areas, contractor provided chemicals, and your work area. If you will need access to the regulated production area, 
your project manager will coordinate your attendance at the mandatory Gowning Procedures for Controlled Production Areas training. Facilities maintenance systems such as air handling, electrical, water, wastewater, and fire protection systems have a direct impact on product quality and are under very tight control. Do not shut off or modify any of these facilities maintenance systems unless you have received clearance from your project manager and the facilities maintenance personnel. A permit for this task may be required. Strict attention is given to cleanliness of the facility, equipment, and tools. You must manage any expected dust, dirt, or odor during the work. Your pre-task plan will communicate the hazards and controls for all work tasks to facility operations. You may be required to work during non-peak hours. Food and drink are prohibited in manufacturing or utility areas or laboratories. This includes candy, gum, and cough drops. Makeup, perfume, cologne, and jewelry are also prohibited in these areas. Contractor chemicals may not be stored on site unless given express permission by your project manager and health, safety, and environment, or HSC, representative. At the beginning of your project, give your project manager and HSC representative your list of chemicals and material safety data sheets you will use at the work site for review. Your project manager will assign you an area where chemicals, tools, equipment, material, and debris containers can be stored. Keep all containers properly stored and labeled. Have secondary containers for liquids and chemicals. Contractors must remove all unused chemicals from site at the end of their work. Any hazardous waste that was generated on site while performing your work must be coordinated for disposal with an HSC representative. Hazardous wastes include waste oils, waste solvents, waste aerosol cans, etc. Hazardous wastes must be appropriately labeled and stored on site in designated locations. Always keep the work site clean and remove all debris daily in aisles, corridors, or stairwells. When setting up your work area, Pay close attention to keeping aisles, exits, and equipment clear and ready for immediate use. These include, but are not limited to, fire risers, fire extinguishers, fire access roads, emergency showers and eye washes, electrical panels, and storm drains. You must comply with the Hazard Communication Standard and share responsibility in hazard communication and hazard warning in the shared work area. Hazard communication is accomplished by using pictograms, labeling, signs, safety data sheets, and training. Some of the signs you may see while working on site include the National Fire Protection Association Hazard Diamond and the globally harmonized system pictograms. You'll see these throughout the property. It is your responsibility to post signage and erect suitable barriers around the perimeter of your work area. Pay special attention to openings in the floors, ceilings, roof, or walls, which create a potential slip, trip, or fall hazard during work. As a contractor, it is you and your company's responsibility to ensure that you have the proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, and are utilizing it properly at all times. You must ensure that you have all current training and evaluation records available upon request. As a contractor, you must provide your own personal protective equipment. Hard hats, safety glasses, and safety shoes are required on all construction jobs, unless specifically noted by your project manager. Review any work plans for work that requires or could require use of a respirator or hearing protection with your project manager and HSC representative. As a contractor, it is you and your company's responsibility to ensure that you have the proper document training records and licenses for operating tools and equipment necessary for your job. You must provide all tools and equipment, including ladders, electrical tools, and industrial vehicles necessary for your job. This equipment must be kept in good condition, inspected before each use, and used properly. All tools shall be used with the correct shield, guard, or attachment recommended by the manufacturer. You must remove all defective and unsafe equipment from the worksite immediately. Your equipment will need to be cleaned before bringing it into a GMP regulated area. Check with your project manager before bringing equipment into a room. 
powered industrial trucks, such as forklifts, motorized hand trucks, and mobile elevated work platforms allowed on site must be in good repair and inspected daily before each use. It is the responsibility of your supervisor to verify that you have documented training and any necessary license for operation of powered industrial equipment. You may not use site-owned powered industrial vehicles unless specifically authorized by your project manager. Use of any crane lifts that affect occupied areas or buildings must be reviewed by an HSC representative. To prevent anyone from passing or working under a suspended load, the area under the swing radius must be barricaded and placarded. The top floor of a building under a crane swing radius must be evacuated. Only qualified personnel may install, repair, modify, or move electrical service wiring and equipment. Whenever possible, electrical work should be performed on de-energized circuits, with lockout, tagout procedures being followed. Contractors must provide their own lockout, tagout equipment. Work on live electrical circuits must be reviewed by your project manager and HSC representative. Portable electric tools must be double insulated or electrically grounded by a grounding conducted with a cord and plug. Extension cords must be the three-prong type for grounded tools, and cords must not run through doors, across aisleways, or walkways without proper protection. Ground fault circuit interrupters must be used for all cord-connected tools and equipment in damp, wet, and outdoor areas. Any interruption of building utility systems must be approved by your project manager, and facility operations must be notified 24 hours before the scheduled interruption. These include, but are not limited to, the air handling, electrical, water, wastewater, lighting, and fire protection systems. Our site has several permit programs, such as confined space, hot work, and lockout tagout. Hot work involving intense heat, exposed flame, or generating sparks requires a hot work permit for each day the work is performed. This includes welding, soldering, brazing, grinding, and cutting with a torch. You must always provide a fire watch and safety equipment. Your project manager will instruct you as to the process of obtaining a hot work permit and any other required regulations for hot work. All confined space work must be reviewed by your HSC representative before beginning, and some confined space work may require a permit. Confined space work must be conducted in accordance with the site's Confined Space Procedures program. Most permit-required confined space projects also include hot work, lockout tagout, or additional tasks that could be hazardous if not mitigated correctly. Your HSC representative will review your confined space program, work plan, and employee training records. You are responsible for supplying the necessary PPE and any required safety equipment to safely and properly perform the job. Please submit all documentation to your HSC representative at least three days before the job takes place or as soon as possible. Lockout tagout procedures are in place to prevent injuries from unexpected release of hazardous energies during work on equipment or systems. Sources of hazardous energy can include electrical, thermal, mechanical, chemical, or pneumatic. Your project manager will work with you to identify the hazardous energies, their shutoff points, and provide you with appropriate procedures and policies documents related to lockout tagout. Compressed gas cylinders must be stored and transported in an upright position with their caps on and secured at all times. Cylinders must be moved on a cart and never dragged or rolled. Cylinders must be segregated from incompatible materials. You are responsible for your own waste material. Anything you bring to the site must be removed by the job's end. Contact your HSC representative for information on how and where to dispose of any hazardous waste generated at the site. This includes asbestos. Under no circumstance should you pour hazardous material down the sanitary sewer or storm drain sewer or on the ground, pavement, or roadway. 
Never rinse equipment or tools to storm drains. Be especially careful about using materials near storm drains. Cover drains if there is risk of release of any material into the drain, including during any material transfer operations. Nothing is allowed down a storm drain with the exception of rainwater, landscaping water, and in some circumstances, dechlorinated fire hydrant water. Do not bring gas-operated generators on site or remove ground soil without prior approval from your project manager and the HSC representative. These activities may require permits. For waste removal coordination, talk to your project manager or call your HSC representative. Give 24 hours for a response. If any materials are released or spilled, call 2279 from any in-house phone immediately or from a cell phone, 707-453-2279. In the event of a release or spill with the potential to cause immediate danger to the surrounding community, contact 911. Remember, your project manager is your best source for answers if you have any questions while on site. We want you to be informed and successful while working here. You are helping us provide the products that many rely on every day by keeping our facility running at its best. For further detail on any of these subjects, contact your project manager.